your guide to successful face-to-face -face home fire safety visits using the person-centred framework. In partnership with UK Fire and Rescue Services, we've developed a model that sets out the core components for our home fire safety visits. Our person-centred framework includes the following eight core components and allows us to be clear about the advice that we give and the interventions that we undertake to reduce fire in the home. Home fire detection and assistive technology, safer heating, electrical safety, kitchen, candles and escape planning, clutter and hoarding, deliberate fire, medicines and medical devices, smoking-related fires. Research shows that the risks associated with home fire safety fall into three categories. Risk of having an accidental dwelling fire, risk of being a casualty in an accidental dwelling fire, risk of being killed in an accidental dwelling fire. The aim of home fire safety visits is to reduce the risk to life by delivering advice and changing behaviour in the home. In order to be successful, the individuals we visit must be at the centre of everything we do. A person-centred approach to home fire safety visits recognises that the individual's characteristics may have varying and increasing fire risks based upon numerous and changing factors, which can be categorised under the following three headings. Behaviour factors, person factors, home factors. Home fire safety visits are not based solely on the type of premises in which people reside, as we know risks are also associated with the people that live there. Whilst we want to introduce a consistent and evidence-based approach to addressing fire risk based upon the eight core components, we also want to encourage fire and rescue services to provide additional advice and interventions where local circumstances and need warrants it. The core components of a home fire safety visit in the person-centred framework adopt the hierarchy of risk control as recognised by NFCC National Operational Guidance, NOG. This control measure is based on information provided by the Health and Safety Executive about the hierarchy of control. Risk control involves introducing changes to reduce the likelihood of a hazardous event from happening and or reduce the consequences of the hazardous event. We need to promote a series of risk control measures to facilitate this approach. Our role is to offer coordinated support, offer personalised support, interact with dignity, respect and compassion, build on individual strengths and develop resilience. All fire services have agreed that a consistent approach to prevention training is the best way to meet professional standards whilst working towards our common goal. The person-centred framework is an approach that puts the individual at the centre of everything we do. We believe this is the best way to ensure each visit addresses the specific risks for that home, including helping people to adopt fire safety behaviours. We all know that small changes in behaviour can have a big impact on improving fire safety, but to change a person's behaviour, we must first understand their current behaviour and their ability to change. We can assess this by looking at three key factors. Capability – whether they can do the behaviour we're asking them to do. Opportunity – what might support the person to change their behaviour. Motivation – whether the person is willing to change their behaviour. Together equals behavioural change. This is known as the COMB model. Once we understand the person's individual circumstances, we should be able to help them see the benefits of changing. People are influenced not only by what we say, but how we say it. Here is a simple way to make sure your interactions with people are person-centred. Ask open questions. Affirm safe behaviours. Reflect back their concerns. Summarise key points. You can remember these as ORs. Let's look at a few in action. Introductions let the person know your name, allow for a more informal conversation and reassure them that you are not a threat. This is an example of an open question, designed to get the person talking and begin conversation. Hello, my name is Archie and I'm with Kent's Fire and Rescue Service. When did you last update your fire and safety knowledge? Introductions let the customer know your name, allow for a more informal conversation and reassure them you are not a threat. Well, I haven't had a refresher in a while, I suppose.
The aim of our visit is to have a look around your home and offer any advice or guidance to make it more fire safe. I'm sure you're already very safety aware. Remember to remain aware of your surroundings whilst you walk around the person's home. You may see, hear or be told something that doesn't feel right. If you identify any safeguarding concerns, you should follow your fire and rescue services safeguarding procedure. It's nothing to worry about. We are working in the local area and we would like to offer you some free advice on how to keep you and your family safe. Using affirmations and offering support rather than being judgmental can help to put the person at ease. Well, how long will it take? I'm pretty busy today. If you hear that the person is unsure, respond to this by offering reassurance. It will only take about 20 minutes and I'll be out of your way. Would you mind giving me a tour around the house so we can spot these things together? This is reflective listening. On arrival at the property, you can say I can see you've got a smoke alarm in here. That's half the battle. Now we're summarising the key details to enable the person to make an informed decision. You're the expert, but giving them an equal part in the visit will make them feel more comfortable and in control. It is important to give this button a press at least once a month to ensure that the battery is still working. Can you make sure it's working now? By getting the person to perform a test, you can check they're capable whilst continuing to involve them in the visit. Great! Are you happy to check this alarm once a month in future? Summarise what you have discussed, asking them to reflect back the key points so you can check that they've understood. Another simple way to appeal to people is by using the EAST framework. This encourages us to keep our messaging easy, attractive, social and timely. Just in case there was a fire, it is important to close all of your internal doors so that you can easily prevent the fire from spreading as quickly. Oh no, the cat has the run of the house at night. I wouldn't want to pen him in. OK, well, perhaps you could close a few. Lots of people close the kitchen door where their appliances are. You would be amazed at the amount of calls we get where pets have accidentally started a fire by turning things on. This ticks the attractive box by appealing to their emotions to change their behaviour. By using the phrase, lots of people, you're also affirming the social element. This response is also timely as it suggests an accident could happen unexpectedly encouraging them to implement a solution sooner rather than later. So that's a quick overview of some of the ways you can work towards a person-centred approach that helps people to adopt fire-safe behaviours. To change a person's behaviour, we must first ensure that they have capability, opportunity and motivation. Com B. When talking to the person, use the ORS model to ask open questions, affirm safe behaviours reflect back their concerns, and summarise what you have discussed. And finally, remember to be easy, attractive, social and timely, EAST, to find ways that safer behaviour may slot into existing routines. Why not put this theory into action on your next home fire safety visit and see for yourself the difference it makes to individual behaviour and the wider community we serve. Finally, it's important that we collect accurate information about the people we visit, as this helps each fire and rescue service to offer the support individuals need. Having good data also helps us to build an accurate picture of the people in our communities, so we can continue to improve our targeting and evaluation. We know that asking people for their personal information can be daunting. You might be surprised to hear that people aren't as cagey about sharing their personal data as you expect especially if their information will benefit them or others in their community. This is especially true if you take a moment to explain why the fire service needs the information and how it's going to be used.
you will also find it easier to collect sensitive data towards the end of the home fire safety visit, after you have built a rapport with the individuals. Could I please take your full name, contact number and date of birth? We only use this information to check that you were happy with the visit and to see if there is anything else we can do for you or your community.